Greetings, Royal Family. Welcome back to another review of these Real Housewives of Atlanta, episode 20. Now, first of all, I would just like to say that my DVR didn't even record the recent episode because this episode was supposed to originally air on March 29th. So it totally threw my DVR off, but luckily I was able to catch the episode. So thanks for clicking on the video. Let's get straight into it. So the episode opens up with Nene, you know, sashaying down the stairs. She's having a conversation with Greg. The ladies are back from Greece. So Nene is filling Greg in on what happened in Greece. You know, Bravo, they're really, 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 really shady. Bravo had all the receipts uh, as far as Kenya's behaviors. And it makes me wonder if they had planned to kind of stick it to her at the reunion. And I wonder if they are getting tired of Kenya's antics. We don't know. So Nene, she's filling Greg in. And of course, Nene is leaving out some things. Greg is co-signing whatever it is that Nene says. Of course, that's his job. So he's just supposed to say, yes, yes, y'all, nod and smile. Anyway, let's move along, right? Todd and Candy. Now, this this storyline, this episode was was interesting. Um, and it touched on a few things. I wasn't really a f I wasn't really feeling Todd this episode. I'm gonna keep it real. So he, you know, he's not that excited that Candy is leaving. Um, and he's also not excited about Candy's sex scene that she has in her upcoming role for her show. Now I think that Todd is not happy because Candy is doing what she has long desired to do. And it just seems that things are not working out for Todd. You know, he had all of these ideas. He wanted to open up a Mexican restaurant, a trucking company, another OLG restaurant. He had all of these business ventures and it doesn't seem that thing. It doesn't seem like things are going in his favor. He may not be wanting to say that. But he's just, he's just not feeling Candy being away. Now, I do understand that Candy is getting ready to have a new baby. Her, the surrogate is getting ready to give birth to the baby. And um, just things are, and you know, Ace is still little. So it's like Candy is moving fast and kind of like not spending a lot of time with the family, not spending a lot of time with Todd. But I just think it's deeper than that. You know, um, when he's on top, it's like he's pumped up and he has no issues with grinding and being away from the kids. And it's just just seems like Candy can't get the opportunity to do that. I mean, when he met her, he was attracted, obviously, to her hustle, you know, and her grind. And he had the same hustle and grind. So they thought that it would work, you know, but now. I don't know. I don't know what's going on there. I think there's more going on than what's being portrayed on the show, but eventually it'll come out. Anyway, they agree to go to counseling, which is good. Candy's willing to go to counseling. She says she notices that Todd is just acting a little bit weird, and Todd is just like, yeah, I'm down to go to counseling because there's some things I have to get off my chest. That was a red flag for me because it seems like he's ready to sound off. Something is bothering him, and it might be more than just Candy being away for X amount of weeks. As far as the traveling back and forth, I can respect Candy's willingness to make it work because she always makes it work. But I traveling with a newborn baby on a bus, on a plane and back and forth. And now nah, there has to be some sort of compromise there. Anyway, let's move on. We'll get back to Todd and Candy later. So Cynthia, she stops by Nini's boutique and she's all giggles and laughs. They both have on leopard print and it's all, it's all fun. Just like old times, you know, she, Cynthia imitates Nini. She puts on an act and she lets Nini know like, look, you know, I wasn't going to shade you. Like, this is all I was going to say. I think that Cynthia was lying. I think that she just threw something together. Um, she did a little improv skit had Nene laughing, you know, I, I don't think that that's what she was going to say when they were in Greece and when Candy was supposed to imitate Kenya and Cynthia was supposed to imitate uh, Nene. I wasn't buying it. So Nene and Cynthia, like I said, they both have on like matching animal print and Cynthia is just all giggly. And then Portia, she rolls up and they all laugh and giggle. Cute, cute, cute. And this is where um, Portia, she reveals her charity event is coming up. 
So they all agree, like, yeah, 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 we're going to go, we're going to go, yada, yada. Move on to the next scene. We see Kenya. She's meeting up with her, uh, with a lawyer or an estate attorney. And she's still, to me, she's just trying to get us to believe that she and Mark are married. You know, she wants to know what her options are, blah, blah, blah. She says that she makes more money than Mark. She wants to make sure that her assets are protected. Brooklyn gets everything. The lawyer lady asks Kenya, do you want your husband to have access to any of the money in the trust? She says emphatically, no, 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 no. She has her aunt, not Lori, but whatever her other aunt's name is. Uh, she's her power of attorney. So it seems like Kenya has everything set in place. All right, girl, we'll, we'll play along. So we're at Portia's event, right? I'm just skipping around. Portia's event was very nice. You know, Nene shows up and she's talking to some of the girls and she's revealing to the lady that there's rumors on the blog. She's telling Portia and Tanya. She's showing them some blog on her phone and there's rumors on the blog that Mark is cheating on Kenya. And Nene says that Kenya is all up in everybody else's business when she's got mess going on at home. And Portia was like, no, 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 it's probably not true. You know, it's probably all lies. And Nene made a good point. I mean, we've all been saying that. Like, Kenya's got a lot going on at home, and she's all up in everybody else's uh, business. So, of course, Nene was going to take that opportunity to share that information. So we get into the fundraising uh, event, and Portia, she gets up there. She she was a great host hostess. Um, Portia looked great in her pink. And Portia and Tanya, they start sharing their fertility story stories. And in Kenya's confessional, which, <laughs> boy, oh boy, this Kenya character is a trip, ain't she? So she, in her confessional, she says that she almost died giving birth to Brooklyn. And no one should ever shame a woman for not being able to have children. It was at this point that I wanted to pick up my own purse and leave my own house after hearing that. <laughs> it's like, really, really Kenya? Too easy. Ne never mind. So we see Marlo. She goes up and she gives her testimony. Uh, she said that she had two ectopic pregnancies and she got emotional. And I do love the fact that she is now raising her nephews. And it just brings out a softer side of Marlo, which I love. Like, she's grown up a lot, you know. She, she takes care of those boys like they were her own. And that's just a beautiful thing. You know, I know a lot of people want Marlo to get a peach and be a full-time cast member instead of a friend of the show. I do like Marlo and I love seeing her on the show over the years because like I said, she's grown and we do get to see a softer side of her, especially this season because she um, has full custody of her nephews. And she, she said she got emotional and she, when she was giving her speech and she said she wondered why she wasn't able to have children and maybe this is the reason the reason why she wasn't able God didn't want her to have children is because she was going to be a mother to her nephew. So I thought that that was beautiful. Everyone was getting emotional. Now, here's why I don't want Marlo to get a peach. I know that sounds crazy. I like Marlo. I do. So if Marlo gets a peach and she becomes a full time cast member, not a friend of the show, we would have to be all up in her business. Like Bravo would have to be all up in her business. She would have to have a, a storyline, of course. Um, I don't know. That may not be good for her, for her, her nephews, especially her nephews. You know, it's a sensitive situation. You know, her nephew's mother is really going through a lot and she's getting the help that she needs. And I just think it's a sensitive time and it may not be a good idea to expose them to so much. Granted, they don't have to be on the show. They don't. But still, uh, and Bravo is very shady. And who knows what things they may dig up about Marlo. Um, also, she won't really have control over what Bravo decides to show and what narrative, you know, they'll push. I, that's just my opinion. So, I mean, prior to her having custody of her nephews, I was all for Marlo getting a peach. But now... It may be at the expense of those young boys. You know, Bravo cannot be trusted, in my opinion. So I, I don't know. I want her to get a peach if that's what she desires. She seems to be cool with it, right? She doesn't care either way. I think she's comfortable with it. You don't hear her saying, oh, I deserve a peach, or you don't see her kicking up and being extra to get a spot on the show. 
Um, and I think Marlo knows the game as well. Like she knows that Bravo is shady. And again, as far as these storylines and these narratives and production, we don't know which way they'll turn. They may love her at the beginning of the season and then turn it around and it'll just be crazy. I, I don't know. I don't know. Nini also went on to share that she she had a miscarriage as well. So at this point, the ladies are sitting around and they're all talking. And Shamia, she shares her story um, about when her water broke. And Kenya is sitting right next to her. And Kenya mentioned, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I remember you called me when your water broke. And... And then Kenya couldn't leave it at that, right? First of all, it's bad enough that she even brought that up, in my opinion. It just wasn't necessary, but whatever, whatever. Anything for the show. Then Kenya had to add, I don't know where Portia was. I think Portia was working or she was busy, you know, basically saying that Portia wasn't around. Now, Portia's face said it all. Like, Portia was very shocked and she didn't know that Shamia and Kenya actually had a relationship, so much so that Shamia's water breaks and she calls Kenya. That's the first person that she calls. So I can understand Portia being taken aback by that because we know Shamia as Portia's good Judy. Not that there's anything wrong with Kenya building a relationship with any, you know, any of the ladies, but it looks a little mm, on both Kenya and Shamia's part. I feel like if it's not a big deal, why wouldn't Shamia mention that she, you know, associates with Kenya from time to time or communicates with Kenya? And why wouldn't Kenya mention that to Portia? Because at the beginning of the season, Kenya made it seem like her and Portia were all good and they were trying to build this friendship, which I didn't buy. I didn't buy it at all. When Kenya was on Wendy Williams, I didn't buy it at all either. So Kenya knows how to play her role. I, I'll tell you, I'll, I'll give her that. She definitely knows how to play her role. So Shamia, I just think Shamia, you know, be, be careful. Um, be careful. I, I just, I have no comment about that at this point. It's just like, it is what it is. Maybe she's keeping her friends close and her enemies, friends closer. Who knows? I hope that Shamia was not running her mouth to Kenya about anything that she and Portia had conver private conversations about. I hope not because woof. That'd be bad. I don't know that. I kind of have to look at Shamia a little bit sideways because again, if it's not a big deal, why wouldn't you just mention it even casually? Like it's no big deal. Mm. We move on to see Kenya and her aunt. Now I did like this scene. Um, this is not aunt Lori. Where the heck is aunt Lori? I liked aunt Lori, but this, this aunt of hers is, um, I like her. She seems very friendly and very mature and sweet. So Kenya, she had a convo with her aunt. You know, she's her power of attorney. And she just let her know, look, this is what I want to happen in the event that anything happens to me. I want you to take care of Brooklyn. You know, Kenya says that her and this aunt grew up in the same house. They were both raised by their, uh, by Kenya's grandmother. And this is her grandmother's daughter, her brother's sister, AKA her aunt and Brooklyn's great aunt. Okay. So, I think that this is a conversation that people definitely should have with their families. I mean, a lot of people don't like talking about death and, you know, wills and, and life insurance policies and funeral arrangements and things like that. But I will tell you this, <laughs> it is a thousand percent better to have these affairs in order way ahead of time before you leave this earth than it is to, to have this conversation and try to get everything in order after the person in question passes away. It is added stress. It is, it is, it's just overwhelming. So I do like that they showed this um, and Kenya showing that she has her affairs in order because hopefully it will encourage everybody to have their, as much as you can, you know, some people can't afford certain things or to put certain things in place, but even something as simple as like a living will, you write something down, you get it, you know, notarized, you get an attorney to look it over, you know, you don't have to, you just don't have to do all these big, big elaborate things is what I'm trying to say. Like Kenya has liquid assets and she also has like businesses and things like that. So it's a little bit different, but I, I would encourage people to have this conversation, man, because 
Once you're gone, it's up to your loved ones to figure things out if you don't have stuff in order. And I'm telling you from experience, it is a lot. That's an understatement. So I did like I did like seeing uh, seeing that. Anyway, moving along. Kenya, she says that she starts talking about Mark and, their, and her relationship. And she says that she put all her feelings on hold to keep her family together. And she said that she was in the dark about a lot of things. She said that she is not allowed to speak to Mark's mother or father. And I said to myself, duh, this is a business arrangement, girl. You, you know, you, I, I just, I'm not fooled by this. I am not fooled by Kenya and Mark, their so-called marriage. Um, maybe it wasn't a part of the contract. <laughs> maybe it wasn't a part of the uh, the business arrangement. Um, I just feel like Kenya, stick to the script. You know, you, you, you know what it is. <laughs> okay, let's say it's not a business arrangement. Wouldn't you question someone's like sanity who marries someone and then later on says oh i'm i'm not allowed i was i'm not allowed to speak to his mother and father so brooklyn is not going to know her grandparents on her father's side you know what's sad the lies that people tell themselves and convince others to believe that it's just sad moving along moving along back to candy and todd now i would just like to say that todd is real crafty and to me he comes off a bit manipulative i'm still trying to figure out right during this conversation how the conversation how did the conversation start out about candy not being home enough because of her career and then it switched into todd trying his best to prove himself to everyone and him not really wanting to start a trucking business, but he did it anyway. And him really wanting to get back into producing and directing like that conversation took a detour. Candy started getting emotional. And I, I, I felt, I felt bad for candy. Todd's point is, you know, you're prioritizing your career and your friends over your family. You know, Ace misses you, you know, the new baby is on the way. And although Todd has a good point, he has the right to express his his feelings. He's in the marriage. I just felt like he was guilting her because he was mad because things were not working out. Things are not working out for him. When he said that he didn't want to start, he didn't really want to start a trucking company. So you have money to waste, Todd? Why would you start a trucking company if you didn't want to start a trucking company? And how is that Candy's fault? If he was even trying to blame her. You know, he feels that he had a lot to prove to everybody. And mm, I don't know. I just think Todd is tired of being in the house with them, them kids. And he wants to get back out on the streets and hang out with his homeboy, Apollo, get back in the strip clubs. You know, and, and that's, I don't know. I could be wrong. I'm joking around, but he probably tired of them kids. There are two parents in the household, right? So that should be, that should, you guys should be working as a team. No, I just don't like that. He made Candy feel guilty about her wanting to go out and do what it is that she wanted to do as far as acting. Like even when she mentioned it in, I think it was the last episode or the episode prior to that, she was so excited. Like you could tell she was extremely excited. She was practicing and Todd was just like, he wasn't feeling it. You know, he did say, you know, go ahead and do your thing. I'm just not comfortable seeing you in sex scenes. And Candy told him like, you know, it's fake, but he says, you know, I don't want you to flop, you know, so do your thing. But it's just the tone and the body language. I don't, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe he feels stagnant because Candy is making connections and he feels left out, you know, because the conversation did switch to him talking about wanting to get back to doing uh, what he was doing when he first met Candy, which is like writing plays and producing. I don't know. Mm -mm -mm -mm. And then I didn't like that he said, well, go ahead and, you know, go on. You know, he pouted and looked at his phone and he said, well, then if you don't want to be here, then say that. And I'm like, Todd, if you don't cut it out, like, why would you say that? And of course, Candy felt bad. I don't know. I think when Candy mentioned that Rock Nation brunch, he felt some type of way. Because I bet you if Candy told him to come with her to the Rock Nation brunch, he would jump at the chance to do so.
But I just, I, I, I felt bad that Candy was crying. And I don't like that working mothers are sometimes like chastised and, you know, the guilt trip is laid on them because it's like, yo, you're spending time away from your family and your kids need you. That's true. But can but their father is in the house too. I, I just, I don't, I don't get that. I don't get that. And it's like, if the roles were reversed and the man was outside of the household, if Todd was grinding and hustling and was, he was away, it would just be, that's just the way it is. Like I'm the man of the house. I got to provide, I got to do this. I, I, I don't know. Mom and dad are in the house, you know? Um, I just don't think Todd is, I don't think he's wrong but I just think it's a little unfair to guilt her, especially because she is so excited about her acting role. She re she wants to act. You could tell how excited she was. She's like a little kid living her dream. And it is temporary. It's not permanent. You know, in a marriage, there's sacrifices. And yes, people get tired. I get it. You know, he, he says that he was always supportive of her dreams and she was always supportive of his any business venture he wanted to do, she supported him. I don't know, y'all. Tell me what you guys think. I mean, do you think Todd is, I don't think Todd is wrong. I'm not saying that he's wrong because it is a marriage. He has to express himself to his wife. I do think that they could benefit from going to counseling. I want to know what Todd is really angry about because he's obviously angry about something. And hopefully next week we will get to see them in their counseling session. But I just don't think that Candy should be made like she should be like he should make her feel bad about it. Like, you know, and then, you know, that pouting. Oh, if you if you don't want to be here, then go ahead. Then mm -mm. Mm -mm. I don't know. Now she's going to go to work on set feeling guilty every day. I don't know. I, I, I just didn't like that. That's I think that's a little unfair. I really do think that that's a little bit unfair considering Candy has been extremely supportive of him because she understands. And again, when you met Candy, she was on her grind. You know what I'm saying? Like you met her on her grind. I don't know. So Royal Family, get down in the comments and let me know what you think. This episode was all right. So hopefully next week, I think next week is the last episode. So if you enjoy the commentary, be sure to hit the like button. Um, yeah, share your thoughts respectfully, of course. Can't wait to see what you guys, uh, you know, what you guys think. So I'll meet you down in the comment section, Royal Family. And until next time, peace.